Welcome to an episode of Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. I this is actually the second recording recording of this mission, and uh, the first one I did, uh, I did a custom battle, uploaded it, yada yada yada, and YouTube then said I had a copyright claim. Apparently, the in-game music somebody else is claiming copyright for it. So this is now a second recording with the music uh, muted, for obvious reasons. I'm not trying to monetize my channel, but I don't want somebody copyright claiming on my channel, if that makes sense. So, so yeah. Anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is a custom battle. And last time what I did was playing as Germany against uh, the British. I did a two battle cruiser versus two battleship run. Now, I was successful. Uh, I had to, I uh, was, I think, the latest I could go is 1924 tech, I believe. And we started at, I think, 15,000, or no, it's like 21 something. So, yes, 1924 is the latest you can do that. Now, I did win, and I technically, both of my ships survived, but one was heavily damaged. I'm going to go ahead and try this again, since I'm doing a new re-upload. I'm going to see if I can take on two British battleships with one battle cruiser. That will be my challenge, because it was fairly easy. So we're going to go ahead and design the ship. What? All right, fine. 1923. There we go. The yellow color is gone. Design the ship. All right. So 1923 battle cruiser. This will be fairly similar to what I built last time. Uh, I believe I had about 31 and a half knots with... Short range, because right now it doesn't really matter. I will have many bulkheads. It was a fairly large design, I believe. I had very good engines, mostly to save the engine weight. I had an extra petrol engine at least, and steering shaft. It does increase the engine weight. Coal does improve the floatability, but it reduces the boiler weight, which is somewhat here. And... I believe I had balanced as my uh, I might just do induced as opposed to balanced. I'll see if I can see how that works out for me. Forced is very uh, does make your funnels very heavy. So, and that's part of the issue is I am making a very heavily armored battle cruiser. This really is more of a proto fast battleship. In effect, uh, maximum quality armor doubles the effect of the system, essentially. Barbets, heavy barbets. This does gain some weight, but you do get some resistances. We'll see if I can get rid of it or not. I didn't bother with an anti torque belt, it adds a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah. Mm, I don't know. We'll see if we, can, if we can keep it or not. I definitely go for anti floating too. I love the fact that you can actually pump the water out as well as re basic reinforced bulkheads. And Citadel, I went with a all or nothing scheme. It does save you tonnage when you compare the two. It does increase the amount of tonnage to your belt and armored deck, but it reduces it elsewhere. Uh, if you have the, for the same armor values, you will save tonnage with all or nothing. Standard, I went to a heavy shell with a standard number of them. And I believe I went with tube powder. It has, of the bunch, is tube powder or white powder? I forget which I went with. They're both very good. I do like the additional range, but I think I went with the tube powder because it gives you a extra penetration and some show damage and reduces your chance of detonation again. We're going against two other ships. I'd rather not take those penetrating hits, so cook me off. As well as slightly faster reload. Um, turrets. I'm leaving standard. I plan to engage at medium to long ranges, so not uh, not an issue. And I will go for enhanced reloading. It does increase the weight and turning time, but a 10% bonus to rate of fire. Let's sneeze at. In terms of my range finding here, uh, base speed, aiming speed, long range accuracy. I think I'm going to take this one because this th it does give you the better long range accuracy. But last time I played this, we didn't actually spot each other until fairly short range. So I'd rather aim more quickly. So I'd prefer to be able to engage and hopefully disengage. 
and it does let your secondaries do a little bit more work. And a radio direction finder, we may or may not use. Uh, I did use it, and it did help me direct me to where they were, but you are paying a not insignificant amount of tower weight. And I'm only bringing one ship, so I'm not as concerned about uh, communicating. So that's the basics there. Main guns. Last time I did this, I had access to good quality, yes, 14-inch guns. Which I have a pretty respectful rate of fire. Good shell weight. Damage is actually a huge jump going from 13s to 14s. I mean, look at that. What, about 1,300 damage jump? It's, it's very, very good. Uh, the 15s are not a bad choice either, but I think this is an excellent compromise. I am going to go with big superimpose is all you need. I'm going to put as far to the stern as I can. In terms of my centerline guns, I actually went with a fairly conservative amount. Two guns for, and one on the end. Uh, it is forward biased right now, but uh, we'll deal with that. Towers, I was looking... Some of these towers actually have extra spotting. So the Advanced Tire 6 actually has better spotting as compared to the 7. Now the 7 does have a greater base accuracy, but being able to spot a little bit earlier could really fail. Secondary tower, a couple of different options here. Again, you could get better base spotting with the secondary tower. So I'm going to go with that. Let's put it as far stern as I can. To try to uh, shift that weight. So for weight, still 11%. We could move this a little bit to the rear. And that would basically balance it. So it will give a very nice uh, field of fire for that gun. Whereas the front guns are somewhat restricted. But superimposed is quite nice. <clears throat> belt. I tend to armor my belt and turrets equal to my caliber. So this is going to be 14 inches of belt with a 14 inch turret and 14 inch conning tower. So very, very tanky. Effectively with 118, 120%. So I'm going to about the calculator here. So that's going to be 14 times 2.18. It's going to be about 30 and a half inches equivalent to my armor. So that means my central line guns of 14 inches. Can I just mouse over? Oh, I can't. I can't. I don't have to go all the way back in. So with 30 and a half inches, means my belt is functionally invulnerable from 17,000 meters, basically. So armoring from more than that to closer in is not going to be very effective. That's going to be a lot of tonnage. Okay, so main belt. Uh, you can't really effectively armor the extended belt. is kind of a waste to even try. But I will armor it to cool it to my deck. So I would need to be invulnerable to my own guns. I'm going to need about six inches or so, five and a half, something like that. So I'm probably, and we can assume they are probably going to have an even bigger, larger caliber considering they're actual full battleships. So they might be bringing 15 or 16, maybe even 17 inch guns. So I can't just armor against mine. So if I go six times 2.18, that would get me 13 inches of deck penetration, which isn't too bad. That's a 6.5 times 2.18. 14 inches, 14.17. So I think I'm going to go ahead with a six and a half inch deck. <clears throat> One inch of deck extended basically gets me nothing. Uh, however, yeah, that would cause bounces at extremely short range. So let's say, assuming a spotting range of 13,000, 12,000. I need about three and a half inches, so we'll go three and a half. That way, at least a shot coming in, assuming I'm bow in, will probably bounce off of the front deck. Belt extended, I'm going to be armoring kind of similarly. I'll go an actual full 6.5 to match the main deck. Okay, we've already used up a lot of our tonnage. Turret tops, 
gonna be seven inches there. I want a little bit extra turret top armor. And secondaries are gonna be armored as well as my extended deck. So 3.5 for now. Okay, lastly, I do need funnels at a minimum. So we're gonna go with, let's see, how much efficiency does that get to me? So one large funnel is almost enough to perfectly run the ship. So I'll put one for it to help balance it. Very good. Secondary guns. I'm going to see if I can fit a pair of 8 inch guns. That's the difference in accuracy. Definitely more accuracy with the twins over the 15s, as well as a higher rate of fire. Yeah. So I'm thinking I'm going to go two twins. There. And one there. Will I. Can I fit her? Oh, oh. Come on. Oh, uh, can I rotate back the other way? Oh, you can. Aha. Very good. So two 8-inch guns on center. Casemate guns. Now, you can use these four chase guns, which would be fine against, uh, say, an armored cruiser. I do find that if you're bow on and having to try to tank a battleship from the bow, they tend to eat shots, and then you get an ammo detonation in that uh, casemate. So I'm only going to restrict my casemates to these side mounts. So we'll go three 8-inch casemates. Right. And they should have an even better rate of fire. Now, to protect the casemates against themselves, boy, they have a lot of penetration. So 10.9 inches. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So let's say at about 10,000, I need about 7 inches on them. Can we get away with 7? We could, and we just have a little bit of to spare. So that's pretty respectable. Those have a rate of fire, 3.7 rounds per minute, 2.7 rounds per minute. That's pretty decent, fairly well armored. Um, could I put, just for giggles here, could put some little two inch or three inch peppers anywhere. I could put some threes. I didn't do this last time, but I'm kind of curious that would affect it, it would give a little bit of a, a little bit of a peppering gun I'm gonna fill those ones too. Uh, there's no actual uh, you know DDs in this mission but I feel it would be it would make sense to have a little something a three inch gun you could argue you know at some point might actually be an AA an early AA gun so I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that you could even maybe put a three inch uh, secondary Maybe a three inch double. We'll say it's actually part of its suite. There. Maybe another three inch double parked right there. Now I don't think that's going to restrict. No. The conning tower would restrict this anyway. You do have to watch it. If you move this up far enough, let's say move it up to there, these can restrict the gun sometimes. So this one still has clearance, and this one's not being interfered with. But if you move these too far up you can on say a full battleship with a larger deck you can actually accidentally there we go block the field of fire see how it's got that yellow that's because it's actually being blocked by this secondary turret so so we got some three inch guns here not interfering with anybody else and provides just a little bit more of a field of fire for actual uh, say uh, dealing with a destroyer or some such and doesn't look like it restricts that gun at all. Okay, that seems pretty reasonable to me. Seems like a fairly realistic ship. And for 28,000 tons, not too bad. We have a little bit of spare buoyancy. Port weight offset. What went wrong? Ah. <laughs> it uh, doesn't always delete those secondary guns properly. Okay, seven inch secondaries. Is there anything else? What's the plan say? The Lutzo class battle cruiser restricted access. Beam draft forty two displacement normal twenty eight thousand three. So what she's designed for standard. Okay, interesting. Three times two fourteen inches propulsion ninety thousand horsepower with a thirty one and a half knots. Um. Now, with that said, 
could we go up to say 31 knots? I, I would like it if I could. How much more tonnage? I could get with a little more tonnage. That moves things. Uh, yeah. I want to see. These parts are badly placed, but then we could move this. A slight larger and heavier target for sure. I would spread those out a little bit better, giving them a little bit more of a reasonable amount of room. Yeah, it's not too bad. Is it worth the 30, the extra not a speed though? It does make it a larger target, which I don't necessarily like. Good fire is mostly fine. I have these spread apart to try to keep, make sure the ship uh, can keep functioning. Hmm. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. I think this is a fine ship. And with that little extra 32 knots, I have a need for speed. 31 half. Yeah, we'll leave with that. I think that's pretty reasonable. A good early fast battleship design. Highly accurate 14 inch guns. Now, it's definitely something to be said for using the other uh, range finder. But this worked just fine for me last time. So I want to give this another go. Especially since it was such a short range for the actual spotting and shooting happening. It happened at like 10,000 yards before I went, whoa, this is way shorter range than I expected. So we'll see. We'll see if I can do this. And he spotted to the north. All right, so we will go on ahead and angle in. That's true north. We'll angle in something like this. And we'll maintain full speed. I don't want to move a flank just yet. Speed it up. And if this proves a failure, I can always switch it around. Add RDF. I did have RDF last time. I'm not sure if it's worth it or not. but Because even though you have RDF, your guns don't actually pre-aim. I noticed. Good amount of guns. Of course, last time, you know, I had two ships as well. So we'll see how this works out. Truth be told, a stern arrangement would work better for actually... Uh, for a chase battle, but... You know, it depends on the nature of the ship. This is designed to pursue armored cruisers to logically have the guns to the front. If it's designed for defensive purposes, then have them at the rear, which point, why are you really designing the ship? So, we'll see. We'll see if this is glorious victory or tragic defeat. Now, I think I'm just going to leave it on 10x until we actually find the targets. I do like this update. They uh, did quite a bit of work on this. I've been playing it for... I joined the Alpha, I forget, in December or something like that. But, uh. Oh good. She doesn't. She's pointing my direction, but I don't think she's actually aiming at me. So I'm going to. Go ahead. She has a grind on it. So I don't think she's actually. Big gun design would make sense, most sense for this, but you know, 
I like trying to design ships that at least seem fairly reasonable. Uh, I think that's about as much aim as I can get. Looks like it's an identical ship. I like that you can see a splintered deck damage there. That's actually pretty cool. I don't know how much that affects the actual performance of the deck armor in that area. Could be just visual right now. That does reduce your own accuracy though. Exciting. She might be exciting. I was dealing with ships with 16 inch guns, uh, which is pretty darn scary. But 8 inch casemates, wow, they actually make this fit? Or it's just because of the large size. 7 inch secondaries, I like the way they're pointing out there, it's kind of cool. 5 inch mid period. Oh, look at that, a tiny secondary tower to the front, which is going to reduce its accuracy for sure. But that let them fit another turret if you're interesting. I like that. Okay, so the ship's doing pretty well. Chance to hit. That was seven and a half percent. Rixie. Penetration, 50%. Yeah, we're going to say chance is high. So we'll go ahead and switch to high explosive for now. Go back to two times speed. I generally find I prefer two times the most. It feels the most... Uh, um, interactive. The shells feel like Because like that one time, one X, everything's just... Way too slow. Range 13 and a half. Target locked.
Oh, accidentally told her to turn. Oh, no. Get back there. Don't do that. <laughs> you want to kite away. This were honestly, maybe even in lieu. Oh, destroyed casemate. Excellent. And I bet you it's one of those forward casemates. They are the devil. Uh, actually, it's on the sides. Okay. Normally, I end up taking a pin on these forward casemates. Damage. Oh, she's burning merrily, though. And I'm not even running like a lightite for the additional uh, fire chance. She has, oh, minimum bulkheads. Yeah, so the fire is going to be very good here. Armor's pretty light, 1.7 to 12.3 inches. Top speed of, whoa, 15 knots. Okay, so we just kited out a little bit too far. So we have to turn in. If we're turning, we're probably gonna just go bow in. Fortunate. We'll go full speed. So this engagement's gonna be fairly short range and we can't really get beyond 14 kilometers, I believe it was, so. Yeah, pretty short range, which is not great for us. We are, on average, more heavily armored than her, so that is quite good. And if we can take care of one ship at the time, that's gonna, definitely going to be in our favor. And that's about northeast, yeah, because she's right over there. We'll do something like this. There, can I go towards? There she is again. Hey, it actually remembers the identification. That is awesome. That is a huge issue with, like, uh, Rule the Waves is you'll sink a ship, or you'll, you'll get an identification on the ship, and it won't remember, because you went out of view for a minute. All right, we're gonna keep angling in. We'll do a little bit of angle, because we do have a very nice wide angle angle on this return. Now this works, it'll be a little bit more sluggish. Get my guns on, which is not great. This four and a half. So our own maneuvering. But we have cruising speed, which is helping. I have experience with cruising, it'll actually start to, uh, yeah, lose some accuracy. Ooh, flooded. Now, I definitely prefer using uh, AP. But the ricochet angle is very high, so I'd rather the shell eat and bite in. Get 
flooding under control. Didn't actually fire coming in. Okay, bounces, excellent. Oh, that hail of fire. Full turn. Okay, we're at the apex. We're out at the apex. Oh, this is going to be bad. Okay, we did take one pin. Mid belt, to be expected. They want to keep closing. Okay. Now I can start pulling down that angle something. Wrangled out. There we go. We're starting to bounce again. This is where the capture turrets would have helped. They are a little bit sluggish. Sure. But it's not hurting me too much, though. I guess faster opponents are probably going to be faster. Per se. But again, depends on the ranges. I'm okay. under control though. the better uh, angle right now in the ocean, so. Although she's starting to turn. Uh, we have continued to slow. Not great. For now. Ocean's still in pretty good shape. Main tower damage. Excellent. So damage to the gun, damage to the casemate. Very good. Which targets the resolution then? With. And perhaps. Oh, 
ahead and switch to this angle. We'll just keep turning on around, kite a little bit more, and switch to where we can focus on this ship instead. If she's going to turn away, that's fine. Let her. I mean, she just has her stern guns to us for right now. As long as the resolution is a better target, we'll just maneuver. That'll also allow us to roll over to put it in theory our better protected side, because this side, oh yeah. Look at the damage the ship is taking on both of them. It's bouncing like a camp though, but her turrets are getting beat. That's what the biggest issue is. Before I had two ships to split the damage across, so somehow just one, so I have to try to keep this ship intact and take down two. I'm doing a good account for ourselves. The damage to both these dreadnoughts is very good. leave her an angle like this for now. No longer angling too far. Not until the guns are ready. Just stay nice and angled. Reset. This engine is staying damaged. Looks like it's not getting repaired. Kilometers, yeah. I think I'm approaching maximum range again for uh, for their visibility. So I'm gonna angle something like this. Try to use my superior uh, vision. Yep, they've lost visual. That was bounce. And what's it look like now? Average chance. We'll keep the AP loaded for now. Let me see. At the 13 and a half kilometers. Okay. We'll probably pack the deck. Those both those missed. The other ship's totally unspotted at this point. That ship's basically dead in the water. It's barely moving. It's the speed. Just shy of seven knots. A lot of structure damage, yeah. Let's see how we're looking. Destroyed casemate. Yeah, very good. Another fire. Can go in just a tiny bit here. And this one to kind of just, just gently loop around her. Containing this nice long range. So we got the superior spotting. That's advantage up oh. or was or that's the advantage of my higher quality or these very long range spotting uh, towers tuck in just a little bit more make this work we will see them Necessarily showing my broad, broadside, but as long as I maintain the range, it'll be okay. At least our flotation damage is pretty good. They haven't, that uh, compartment looks to be just, they're having problems uh, reducing the floating any further. <laughs> and at this point, I think I'm going to switch to high explosive because she is. Looks like she might be trying to disengage a little bit, so. Yeah, might go just a tiny bit tighter in. What's our range look like? 13 and a half. 10% chance to hit. So we're maneuvering damage. 
Although the damage instability is slowly going down, it looks like. Yes, yeah, so we're slowly repairing our own ship. Getting rid of that. High explosive out. She is trying to run. But they're not they're not escaping. Destroyed casemate, perfect. This reminds me, how's my ammunition doing? Pretty good. We've gone through not quite half, because I think we had 600 rounds to start. So. Maybe I, maybe I should have gone for a larger uh, munition bunker. Munition storage. So this is going quite well. And I'd say we definitely have the tactical victory. We've pretty much disabled both battleships. We can engage at range and pummel them. And uh, we can disengage whenever we want. Just a little bit. Let's see if I can, because I don't want her to escape. That's for sure. Bulkheads, many. Maximum bulkheads is definitely not a bad thing. I just don't find it's normal. <laughs> These spread out funnels mostly worked. It would have been nice to have had another one in the middle, but let's see. so be it. Uh, I believe I have seen a shell impact and take out two turrets, but I could be confusing that with the uh, rule of waves. I'm sure, I've definitely seen it there before. It's uncommon, but it happens. Yeah, we're just shelling with impunity now. Yeah, we're accurate. Definitely accurate shots. 15% is going up to close. Getting into secondary range now. So I think if we're in secondary range, I'm gonna angle back out a little bit. Something like that. I don't want to close any further because we will certainly get back into spotting range. She's burning again. Very good. We'll see if the 8-inch guns maybe set fire. That'd be nice. Secondaries. Oh no, actually it was a 14 it says. That said, that area is definitely getting saturated. Heavy flooding through the apartments. Poor apartment. That one's not even coming out now. Oh man, she's wallowing. Still doing okay ish, and I mean, it's a little range. Start moving around here. She might flood out. Yeah. 
Trips in. Uh, they're trying. Stay. Pin vertical or horizontal? Another hit or two. She's still flooding. Location seems to stabilize though. sister just replied so we can't see the sister ship yet that's the issue is you do have to deal damage to an undamaged location during the convention fire. Not sure of burning water, but you know, probably oil. down now finally. Come on, just sink. Just sink. Come on. Yes, that next apartment. Sink. Very good. Come on, girl. Go down. Shared spotting, so I don't know if that ship was spotting for her sister. But uh, we'll see. We'll turn in here. My max speed. 19 ish. No, we'll leave it at full. I don't I don't know if it can ever recover on from engine damage. It might be maybe that machine space that's partially flooded. Hmm. Anyway, we're in good shape third of our structure and most of our flotation so we're doing good uh getting a little lowish on ammo but i think good enough to finish this job for sure i definitely say that uh, we've won 
provided we don't take a big hit. I'm gonna speed this up. I kind of wish that, uh, considering we know where the other ship is, I, I really wish that uh, it would have uh, recentered the uh, guns. There she goes, complete with an oil slick. Actually, it kind of surprises the stern rising out, considering most of the damage is to the stern. That's the compartment that flooded. I don't know. Oh, hey, you can peek under. Oh, oh, there she goes. Okay, then. <laughs> I guess no more of that. Yeah, and speed up to next. Spotted to the northeast. Yeah, we're, we're sailing in the right direction. She has a head start, but uh, considering their base speed was 15, and I'm still making 19, I can definitely catch them catch her. This is where RDF would be a little more useful for tracking that ship, but still. I think I've sufficiently s shadowed, and I did see one salvo coming from her, so she is out there. We still have our conning towers intact. Again, the heavily armored conning tower helped because I think we did take one hit. Bingo. Ocean. It's our range. 13 and a half. So, yep, it's pretty typical. We'll say go out just a tiny bit, something like that. We'll see if that's stern down. Fire and flooding, very good. Maybe go out just a tiny bit more. Four guns, not from the rear yet. Maybe a little bit more. Burning most of the ship. Yeah, but they're, they've got it under control. And we'll pull kids. So. 40,000 ton ship. That's pretty impressive. 30% larger. They overbound. That is something I hope they do fix later on. Is well, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It depends how historically they're trying to go with the designs, because they do very much overgun. At least most of the ship designs I've seen tend to be overgun. I mean, not. I granted, I don't have that much more armor, but it's about like 80%. Anywhere from double to 20, 25%. Yeah, definitely about 20% more. So something to set there. Still burning. She's taking damage. Again, I would like to be using AP right now, but with her trying to disengage the uh, bounce chance it's just too high. Too severe. We've got very low pin. And horizontals the deck. We could probably pin if we actually hit it. But it's unlikely. Do we know how much AP? So she's still got a thousand rounds even. Okay. So we may run out of ammunition. I'm trying to sink her. It's okay that we got got a good angle. We're slowly closing. If I have to, I'll just... might actually have enough. I, keep bouncing up. I do like seeing those shells.
said, with minimal bulk hits, we might be able to get her down to where they have a little bit of fire. But... Ugh, we're eating through. Blowing through the door. Blowing tighter yet. That's the range, 10.9. Might just run the guns dry. Extensive fires, though. That might be enough. Uh, some flooding. I think we're just going to close at this point. I don't know that I can continue to afford these ranges. <laughs> Slow down. It doesn't seem to really matter how much I keep kiting to one side. That ship is determined to keep her stern and we get it on the side. Or finish the blow at long range. Yeah, she just keeps turning to try to steam away. She's definitely trying to disengage. Stands on fire though. Azura Lightite would be helping because of the significantly increased uh, fire chance. Because it wasn't really intense. Loading. There we go. We're doing pretty good. Yep, she's returning fire. Up to knots range is 8.9. So we're gonna slow down. Just we're just gonna let her ease away. Speed five knots. Okay. Slow down to four. We'll just let her limp away. Try to stay right. Angled like this, we should bounce. Do not slow down that quickly. Damage to the main gun. Got some fires. Get back up to speed. Lost some of the Damage to the main gun. Fire flooding.
special pin. Cracks the armor. Good. We're still in good shape. You now we're battered, beaten, but shattered. They are firing AP, which is they're getting the casemates, but they're largely bouncing off the belt. So. but I think it's already going to be flooded, which makes sense. This is where it gets kind of tricky when it's uh, really, really dealing damage to the same locations. I need more hits to the Hey, the three inch guns finally started opening fire. out of the Victory to the German ship fleet. One battle cruiser versus two battleships. Very, very, very good. So yeah, success. Very good ship. Oh, I was hoping it would still have it saved there. Oh well. Still, it was quite the success. I I enjoyed it. I I do get a kick out of this game. 
I don't know if it's worth the buy-in cost. Uh, for me, I, I love naval warfare. I love big ships. It's just one of the coolest things to me. So for me, it was a total buy, but it's very rudimentary right now. You just have skirmish and your naval academy. That's essentially it for right now. And just with some pre-canned missions, which are they're fun. I've gone through a few of them. But uh, is that enough yet? Uh, maybe not. Uh, the campaign, I don't know when that's coming yet. I hope we get part of it maybe in the next alpha. That would be great if we at least see it, see kind of what's going on, even just one nation to start playing with and tinkering around, see, see mechanically what they're up to. But we'll see what the developers have in store. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I don't know many of these I'm going to do, but, uh, you know, whenever I get a, uh, a uh, yearning for it, I'll, I'll throw one on uh, YouTube. Hey, thank you very much. Have a good day.